Hi, I'm like orienting myself with the <laughs> screen. <laughs> um, so we watched the movie last night, my kids, oh my goodness, they were so just enthralled with it. And they loved um, so many of the, the scenes and the characters and they felt like they related to a lot of the characters. So for both Maya and Abby, I am really curious, were there any characters like either the one you played or another one that really struck you as oh, that is so me, or I can relate to this so much. Yeah, yeah, I honestly, people always, you know, think of me as a mom first, but I was a, a kid for many years before that too. And um, I kind of feel like I relate to a lot of uh, Katie as well as Linda uh, for, uh, for different reasons. Um, you know, growing up and being artistic and creative, but also kind of, you um, kind of living in your own world and feeling like you might not be like everyone else um, was a very big part of my life and steered me to a place where um, of comedy where I found a way to communicate with the world and um, find my own voice and then find my own people um, subsequently but and then of course as a mom you know um, Linda's just unwavering love and joy of her family and the perseverance she has to make sure they see their worth and their beauty and, um, and all of those things and to try to make those moments that they can. I relate to all of that. Um, you know, it's so interesting when you're a parent, people always relate to you as a parent, but you know how to be a parent, how to talk to kids because you were a kid. So there's that kind of push and pull because I'm still someone's kid you know yeah um, and I um me too I really relate to Katie in so many ways a lot of the same reasons that that Maya said uh, for herself but also just the that sort of drive to make things and to tell stories and to sort of like look for every outlet to express yourself I didn't grow up with quite as much technology, but mine was, I was always drawing and, and like sort of in a sketchbook and very much living in, in my head and creating other worlds because yeah, I kind of didn't always feel like I fit in and it took me a while to find my people too. And then on the flip side, <laughs> I'm not a parent, um, definitely not a dad, but I, there was a part of Rick's um, mentality that I, really related to as well, because the way, how quick technology is changing, I, I can't keep up, you know, like, I don't know all the, I'm not on like TikTok, I'm not on all these apps that the kids are are up to that I, I, I often don't know the latest thing and sort of feeling uh, a lot of what he's feeling like, can't we just like do this thing, you know? Um, so I, I kind of, I feel, yeah, I just, I love every character in this movie. I think they're all so relatable in a lot of different ways. Tim Burns, please go ahead. Tim Burns from a geek daddy .com. Uh, This uh, This question's for Maya. Um, there's a big dynamic with the father son. Uh, I mean, there's a big dynamic with the uh, father daughter in this movie. How did you make sure that the mother didn't lose focus in the story as well? Well, I think it's difficult for the mother to lose focus in this story because she really acts as the glue for the family and she's sort of this love salve for the whole family. I think she wants everyone to be truly happy as who they are, but she also wants them to connect to each other and she knows how difficult that is. So, um, you know, Linda's happy if everyone else is happy, um, but there's a lot of dysfunction going on and she inserts herself whenever she needs to because family is the most important thing to her. Um, so I think without that heart of the story, um, you know, Linda really provides that heart. And I think without that in the story, it's hard to, it's hard for these characters to look at each other. Um, so she's really essential, I think, in that. Amy, please go ahead. Um, hi, it's Amy from As the Bunny Hops. And Maya, and I think Abby too, I, I was watching the movie last night and I always watch through the credits. The credits were actually really fun, but then there was like a surprise song and then a little something extra at the very, very end of the credits when I was watching. 
And I was guessing that that came kind of like improv when you were recording, but I'd love to know more about how those little moments came along and if there was any other little magic that might have gotten cut that was from your improv during the recording. I might need a little bit of clarity into that, what you mean exactly. I thought you mean the photos or what, what is the part you- Oh, no, there, was, um, there was actually a little song that popped up during the credits about, um, um, about um, fighting machines, I think, that I believe was Maya. <laughs> well, that's good news. I oh. didn't know that was her either. So I think that the version that Abby and I saw didn't, didn't have that. Because yeah, I, don't think I haven't seen that yet. And then there was like a little, at the very, very end, a little stinger that I think was you, Abby, with a little, just little quip. And I can't recall exactly what that was. So I guess, I'm sorry. I guess I'm surprising you guys. No, you're so excited by this. Yeah. Movie. Maybe I, it was like, we saw it, we saw it a little while ago. Maybe that's, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. I think Mike had time to tinker in this quarantine and might've added some little extra little Easter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what is this? I saw, I know, I thought Abby might know. And I was like, God, Maya, do you really have that bad of a memory that you don't No, know? I was very nervous that, that you would know as well. <laughs> yeah. I, my memory stops at the, the photos from when we were younger. Same, same. So I can't wait. Now I can't wait to watch it because I think what I saw was not finished. Yeah, there's a little, like I said, midway little song that pops up. And then at the very end, I think it's you, Abby. I hope, I hope it's you since that's what I'm saying right now. A little okay. quip that pops up at the very end cute very cute all right melissa do you mind the next question your question please yes hi i'm melissa northway um, from dandelion women and so nice to meet you ladies love the film so so cute and love the message um and i have a teenage daughter who i seem to constantly embarrass <laughs> no matter what i do so could you ladies share with me, it could be a sibling or your children, um, tell me what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done uh, to your kid on purpose or maybe not on purpose? I apparently am very embarrassing. I thought that I was fun and spoke the same language as my kids, but I too have a teenage daughter and I was, you know, they were teaching me how to hit the woe a while back and apparently I don't do it correctly. So that was one of those mom moments. We were talking about tattoos the other day with a group of people and I said, uh, you know, something about a, a tattoo and how embarrassing it was for my uh, college roommate, she got this rainforest, Amazonian rainforest frog on her back and now she really regrets it. And my 15 year old daughter looked at me and she said, you really sound like a mom right now. <laughs> I, I like, yeah. thank you. <laughs> also, like, yeah, because I am a mom. Yeah. Also, yeah. it's stupid to get a like not important tattoo when you're 20. Don't yeah. do that, dummy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. Baby. yeah. I don't have children, so not embarrassing them yet, but I'm sure I will. You got a sister, um, brother or sister? I have a brother. You know what? I feel like I am wildly embarrassing. Actually, I have two nieces. What am I talking about? They're five and seven, and I, they're like, ugh. They're, they, they don't call me Aunt Abby. It's just Abby. They're like, Abby, God. Like, <laughs> like even in work, yeah. They, I, I feel, I can't think of a specific thing, but especially the older one, you know, seven years old, I'm finding is like a teen. Right. She's very like, oh my God, what are you, <laughs> what are you wearing? I'm like, oh, this is a good look, Stella, you know? <laughs> Dude, well, thanks you guys. Really love the film. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen, please go ahead. Thank you very much uh, for having me. My name is Kristen and my website is genymama.com. So I have a question um, for Maya and Abby. In the, in the movie, I won't go into like too much spoilers, but there is a scene where the family has to ward off more than just the robots that we had seen. Is there a household electronic item that you would either like love to go toe to toe to like with, or would you be afraid to like, I don't, you win. <laughs> I'm just realizing now, like we have an Alexa in our house and I feel like 
I don't know how that got voted in, but that thing is going to destroy me. <laughs> um, yeah, I need, to, I need to take her down. I need, she and I, we don't agree on a lot of things. She scares me a lot. I think anything that like responds is a little scary in that way. I don't have one. I, I'm not, I'm, I feel often, I, I don't cook that much. I'm trying to get into cooking. I feel like truly most appliances I'm already going like toe to toe with just in their usual functioning, <laughs> like my oven and I are like, let's get this right. Like we can't, we often can't get on the same page already. Um, so <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, I, I'm gonna say my oven. I, I, we we have a, we have some issues. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Amanda. Hi y'all, I'm Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. But thanks for being here and during this it's an awkward time. So I'm just gonna you know keep it real light, light question. And for both of you. Uh, I just wanted to know, you know, I love the scene when they all got the gift of the screwdriver, <laughs> you know, that's because that's like my husband, he gives gifts like that too. So I just was wondering the, the craziest, I guess, gift you got or the most disappointing. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to sell anybody out, but I've gotten some pretty disappointing gifts. I think <laughs> like, even when I was younger and I, I would always get gifts and think like, is this who you think I am? Like, I remember getting like a vest once and I was from my parents for Christmas. I was like, what? A vest? <laughs> like, well, have you met me? I, I've never worn a vest. I, I'll never, I, I don't even think I could wear, no. It's always fascinating when you see yourself through someone else's eyes. Um, and I also give practical gifts too. So I'm sure that's probably really disappointing. I like, I like, um, I like stocking stuffers that you can use. Some people don't, some people don't. Yeah. I mean, I think as a kid, the most like practical functional thing that you like need was, was, is always kind of like pajamas, that, that kind of a, you need them. You want them to, you want them to be cool. But I feel like I was always kind of like, great. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but my family, most of the gifts were art supplies, which was a little practical as well, but pretty, pretty well used and, and functional in a good way. Well, I give my mom pajamas every year and now I'm rethinking it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I think as an adult, it's exciting. As an adult, it's good. But I yeah, I, don't, I stopped buying my kids clothes because they were like, yeah. and it's my gift. Like you're the lady that supplies my clothes. That's cool. Now, we're yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Susie, go ahead, please. Hi guys, I'm Susie with Happy Miss Moments. Um, we love the film and my kids have already watched it about four times already. And I just hear them yelling and screaming and laughing. And when I finally watched it, I was teary. It, 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 it was it gave me all these like emotions like as a mom and I'd love to know from both of you guys how did you prepare yourself before a scene because you guys are kicking ass you guys are loving each other you got you know there's just so much action and then it's at the same time heartfelt so I just want to picture I just picture you guys in a you know your sound booth like what are you doing like, to get those action scenes going we saved all my action scenes for the end of my recording day because there was a lot of yelling. <laughs> so I think when you're doing that kind of like blood curdling, yelling, you wait. Because if you blow your throat up at the beginning of a four hour session, you're in trouble. So um, yeah, we would usually save Linda's like save the world battle cries for the very end. And I would only, and they, we would really try to select a few because I think it can be really, really grading um and then those those touching moments I felt like what was so nice was they were written that way and so it was very easy to access um any sort of emotions necessary because they're right there on the page in front of you um all the scenes I did I did with Mike Grianda in the room um so I was able to talk to him about it and I felt really lucky because he was very transparent from the beginning that Linda Mitchell is really 
sort of a love letter to his own mom and her wonderful, loving, unique personality and a very, very much large personality. So he was right there to tell me more or less. Um, and then, uh, I don't know. I think when you're talking to your, you, you know, when you're, when a mom is talking to her kids, I think when that's there on the page, you kind of you know where it's going. So it was very, very easy to access. Yeah. I feel the same way. We, we saved all of my yells and falls and fight sequences for the end too. Cause I always lose my voice when I do those. Um, and yeah, same for me. I mean, I think, you know, I just tried to think about what that felt like going away from home for the first time, what it feels like when I still feel sort of like I don't belong or I'm, I'm insecure. Uh, and yeah, the great thing about, you know, on even in a live action thing, hopefully you get, you have the space in which to play with you 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 usually with your scene partner in a live action thing. Uh, this you're you're alone, but Mike was with me as well. And there's a little bit more room um, and space to play and to try it again and try it a different way. You know, there's not like a hundred people on set waiting for you to like get through the scene. It's like you know what I want to like try it. Can I try it this way? And there's so Mike is so collaborative and would read with me and um, like. I, I felt it's great when you feel like, you know, we're not moving on until he really gets what he wants and what he's been thinking of for the character. And same for me, like I, we don't move on until I was like, I think that felt right too. And so, especially in those emotional moments. Um, yeah, it's like, it's a process. Okay, Tessa. Hey, Tessa with mamasgeeky.com. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, my family absolutely loved this movie. I have two little girls and we had a blast watching it together. Um, but my question is, there's a very subtle moment where, where Linda asks Katie, you know, did you become official with Jade yet? Like what's going on there? And so I wanna know how it feels, um, Abby, but also Maya, like how important it is to put representation like that into a family entertainment. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to me. I'm queer and I do my best to infuse it into the comedy or the content that I that I write. Um, but, you know, it, I didn't figure my sexuality out till I was really old. Uh, and so it's so exciting to see, um, to see it in a huge animated movie like this that's gonna go to a really broad audience. I don't think that I haven't seen um, a movie that does it like this and it, it does it in a way where it's not even a thing as you said um her her parents love and and accept her and support her for who she is uh it, especially in that way and it's it's not like there is a fracture in the in the family but it's not about that at all and that's the kind of stuff that like those underlying the way it's like almost like a trojan horse in there where it's not a thing it, it is a, it's, it's, it, it is a thing. It's so important for it to just be a reality for kid, little kids to see that, but also really for, for parents to see that. Uh, so I'm so excited for that to be put out into the world. I agree. I mean, I feel like it's so rare when um, something is thoughtfully written as one of the elements of what makes a character who they are, but it isn't the reason we're watching the movie. And I can relate to that so much. Um, I feel like it's such a beautiful representation of humanity and people being all of the things that they are and still being wonderful and still having problems and that our differences are not what the, what the issues of the movie are about. Like that's really what people are. And I feel like it's usually the go-to in film to make sure that that's the, the problem or, you know, if you're any sort of different in any shape or form or color, whatever that is, that that's the crux of it. When in reality, like that's just not who you are as a human being. And so um, I just thought it was so beautifully done and, um, and lovingly done. And, and I love, you know, um, Linda's, um, um, you know, championing of her own daughter's creativity and how important that is to her and recognizing her for who she is. And um, 
I just, I'm very proud that I, I just think it was done in such a beautiful way. And I hope that, um, like Abby said, that parents and children are seeing this because I think more and more, you know, the stuff that my kids are watching, this is, um, everyone's stories are becoming their norm. And I, and I love that we have the ability to live in a time where, where that's possible. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Okay, and to wrap it up, uh, Cami, please go ahead. And I'm sorry, we're just a bit tight on time, but thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Cami from the Mama Um, My question, Maya, I found Linda so relatable as a mom, and I think a lot of other moms will as well, um, how she was comparing herself to other families, like on Instagram, and then how Mrs. Posey at the end, I thought it came like full circle when she told her that she followed her on Instagram. And because she was authentic, I was like, yes, authenticity over perfection. I love that. Um, what do you hope that moms will take away from your character in the movie? Well, it is always nice to see a character doing the things that you do that you can relate to. You know, we all look, we all look outside of our, our lives and compare ourselves, even when we don't realize we're doing it at the same time, trying to honor who we are and trying to honor who our family is or who our people are. Um, uh, but I do hope that that message is clear. And also just this, you know, unwavering desire to make sure that people are valued for who they are is, it, it's not easy. It's a, it's a hard task. And I think there are more and more and more obstacles in the way as, as we go on. Um, but I do think that the work that it, that, that Linda does in the film is, does pay off. And I think, um, does come out. I love more so than her family. I love when she, you know, becomes a mother to the robots as well. You know, I think she's just got this big heart and that's, that's who she is. And she wears it on her sleeve. And what a sweet, um, what is, what a sweet little, little lady, you know, what a, what a big hearted lady she is. But um, yeah, just, just that, that, that um, we are all beautifully imperfect and we all mess up and have a lot of the same you know, goofs that everybody else does. And I, and I love when you see something and it reminds you that you're not alone. Okay, and I'm sorry, we are out of time. Thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thanks, thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.